thanks so much. I got my start in VR 23 years ago when it was first uh, able to run on PCs. Before that, it had to be on workstations. I was creative director and producer of Starbright World in close collaboration with Steven Spielberg, who was chairman of the Starbright Foundation at that time. And we were developing a world for seriously ill children, so it was clear, no headsets, no stereo. We've got plenty of nausea, and the kids are hooked up to machines anyway. But here they could go online and meet their friends. I'm happy this year to be a Tilt Fresh artist in residence and really working now with immersive stereo VR in a very painterly medium. Between these two extremes, I did a number of large virtual worlds beyond Manzanar, the first one, but always doing it as a large screen projection so that the whole family of former internees, their children and grandchildren, could go through the experience together. Then uh, Travels of Mariko Horo, an experience where you're confronting a very strange world, sort of Dante collides with Buddha, uh, created uh, the, to, so you can explore the mysterious West. And here, the Berlin Wall piece, where in the West you can walk along the wall if you try and do that in the East, you will be arrested and interrogated. So the whole time with these, I didn't want to use gameplay and make a game. So I looked at narrative and drama theory, but they always talked about how you can only have drama if you focus on the characters and the interaction between the characters. And even in a uh, um, first person narrative viewpoint, it's one of the characters talking to the audience. But you know, in VR, it's not the narrative, it's the experiential viewpoint. And character development development has to happen in the user. As a designer, you choreograph the user's emotional journey through the experience. And there are a lot of, especially filmic VR, that are using characters where the characters in the uh, piece are interacting with you, the user, as the character. But I personally wanted to create worlds where the drama was happening between the user and the environment. So for instance, if you're climbing a mountain, watching a sunset, you don't always want some characters sitting there and yakking in your face and telling you what you should do. So let's look at uh, drama theory. But you know, in VR, every little encounter has to have its own little loop. So you're looking at a much more episodic structure because you, don't, you can't control what the user is doing. So think of every little encounter has to be a little dramatic encounter. And then we can look at... Um, music to see how even abstract notes can provoke music, uh, emotions from the music, because you're inhibiting, you can play with the inhib inhibition to a stimulus response. You set up expectations within a known structure, and then by playing with those expectations, you provoke emotions in the user. For instance, repetition provokes a desire for change, and, uh, and ambiguity provokes a desire for clarity. We can map at least the Sonata Allegro form directly onto our, our Freitag triangle, and we can see a very close relationship here. But I also develop uh, uh, theories depending on, on my father's work in urban architecture where he was looking at space and sequences of spaces, again, from the viewpoint of an experiential user walking through the space. The geometry creates the space. You make it a place by putting on texture, sound, audio, and the occasion is what is happening at a place at a specific time. Going beyond this, you can look at how these different elements of surfaces, screens, and objects in different relations to your body, above, to the side, below, in front of you, create also different feelings of emotion with respect to space. Uh, and you're dealing with the in space that the person can reach without moving their body and the out spaces where the body has to be moved to reach those spaces or maybe you can only see them, but you cannot reach them because you cannot move your body. And even so, in all these spaces, it's determined by the place whether or not it is, for instance, comforting or claustrophobic, gives you a sense of freedom or a sense of loneliness, because the place and the occasion can change that. Are you in the prison, in a garden, or a prisoner in a garden? Here's a real world example. You start out, descend into the cut, the, uh, the number of deaths rises, 
it traps you in this wall with your reflection. Then slowly, as we back out of the war, the number of deaths decrease, at least for the Americans, and you emerge onto the green sword, changed by the experience. So what, how does this relate to our theory? It was a spatial, metaphorical experience. It was not character driven, but because of the spaces and the design of your progression through the space, you have gone on an emotional journey. That's the five minute version. Talk to me for a longer one.